Hi, good evening, and welcome to day 22 of my 31 days live. Uh, getting close to the end now, um, and uh, yeah, I'm still enjoying every minute of this. Not been a very good day today, I have to admit. Been a bit, bit of flu around. The weather has been absolutely awful, really grey and miserable for most of the day. But um, we're back today, tonight. Now looking at well, tonight I want to be talking about platform mechanics. Uh, and I can already hear you saying, what on earth is platform mechanics? Um, this is a part of the speaking profession and speaking business, which sadly a lot of speakers and a lot of people overlook or don't really grasp. Platform mechanics, to put it simply, is everything except the speech. So it's all of the things that go on around you delivering the speech. Now, in the best situation, the audience doesn't notice the platform mechanics and that's your goal that's you that's what we're trying to achieve when we're speaking now whether that's speaking live in front of an audience or whether that's dealing with it online here um what you're trying to achieve is that the, the stuff that's going on around isn't really noticed it just happens and it just drifts through and you just you know, just take it for granted so I, you know i must admit on going live with this it's still on my early days of it I'm still struggling to get that seamlessness. And it, it's certainly more of a challenge when you're doing the whole thing solo and putting everything together. But it's, it's a goal I'm trying to achieve to make sure that all the bits around it yeah, just flow seamlessly. So I'm going to take a just a quick overview on the topic tonight. And uh, I think through the rest of the week, um, I'm trying to set up some interviews with people so I can do some interviews in this last uh, few days of this challenge. But I'm also going to pick up on some of the other more, more deep, some of the more detailed aspects of this. And particularly, I'm going to look at some of the aspects of going live and the, the platform mechanics around that. But just let's just, just have a look at the sort of issues that we that you need to be thinking about when you're thinking about platform mechanics. So, First of all, the, the, this is the main thing. It's the environment, the, the, the staging. Um, so when you're doing, when you're speaking at an event, uh, what you've got to really start to think about. When I always make sure I get there early. First rule of platform mechanics is get there early. If something is going to go wrong, <clears throat> test it out in in advance and check and make sure you can avoid a lot of problems if you have time to deal with it. If you arrive five minutes before you are about to speak and something isn't the way you want it to be, then you're gonna to have to try and fix it. You're gonna run into the time you should be speaking or things are gonna go wrong while you're on stage. And that means that the audience becomes aware of what was happening. So you need to tackle these things quietly and quickly before the audience becomes aware that there is any problem. So just take the room, for example. And my biggest challenge with the room is I go to so often, particularly if I'm organizing the meeting, I tell the meeting or tell the hotel exactly how I want the room laid out. Now, I have a, a big issue with center aisles. And the problem with that is that I speak mostly from the center of the stage. I move around a little bit, but I like to speak from the center of the stage. And I like to have an audience in front of me. So if you create a large aisle down the center of the room, with everybody on left and right, I'm speaking to a gap. I'm speaking, I don't want that. So I say to people that I would like a block in the middle and then two aisles. If, if, if the room's wide enough, we'll have two aisles um, yeah, on either side. And that we can split the thing up. We can make it a bit of an angle. We can be a bit creative with the style. If it's a theater layout, if it's, uh, <coughs> yeah, if it's uh, another layout, I'll come back to that in a second because we can play with that. But certainly, if you're dealing with a theater layout, I don't like a center aisle. I can guarantee that nine times out of 10, when I arrive at the event, there's a center aisle. It's like the standard theater layout. And they just do it. And then I have to call them in and say, oh, can, we, can we change this? Can we move this around? Now, I need to be there plenty of time before the event if I'm organizing it. Somebody else has organized it. Not a lot I can do about it. They set the room the way they want it. I then have to learn to deal with it. If I can have some influence on the room, I personally prefer what is called cabaret style. So I like people sitting around tables because I, when, I, when I'm speaking, I like to get people discussing and talking things. Now, let's take the room in terms of you know, what, what's happening when, you, when I'm doing online. I've still got to think about the room because I, I'm, I'm in a room. OK, it's, a, it's, a, it's my, actually my dining room that I'm, uh, that I'm working from. Uh, but I need to try and make sure that I've got the right sort of uh, gaps behind me. Uh, occasionally, I use a backdrop. I'm going to be looking at using backdrops a little bit more in the future. Uh, but I need to make sure that I've 
shut the door. I've got rid of all the extraneous noises and things. I want to set things up to so the right distance from the camera uh, so that I position myself within this within the screen uh, properly. Now, you can't do that if you just jump on the camera and think, right, I'm going to go live. You need to make sure it's all set up in advance and you check it out. And you've got all the things ready. Um, things to hand. I need the microphone in the right place. I need my laptop set up. Now, I have my laptop um, raised up, so I've bought a special um, attachment, which I'll, um, I can't show you right now, but um, uh, essentially I'll raise my laptop up so it's not far. It's almost at the, at the level of the camera. That way I can glance at what's going on the screen without too big a look. If it's right down here, I'm going to be talking to you and then looking down to see what's going on, then back up again. And that's just too much of a movement. It makes you aware that I'm having to look somewhere else. Difficult to stop that unless I use you know, some kind of uh, teleprompter, which I don't like to use. This is all basically <clears throat> just ch chatting on the back. I've got a, a little list of things I'm going to talk about. Um, but I need to set that up so that it's as comfortable as possible for me. The stuff I want to look at and access is available when I want to access it. And I'm not too distracting by looking away and moving away from, from talking to you um, by talking to the camera. So those are some of the things. Now, also, I'm going to think about the staging. When you're speaking live, yeah, it is so important to walk that stage. There is nothing worse when you're walking around a stage speaking and suddenly find that there is a squeaky spot on the stage. Every time you walk on something, it creaks because the stage isn't quite level. That will so irritate an audience. And I've seen speakers who are just blissfully unaware that a particular part of the stage was causing a squeak, and they kept walking on it. And the audience is just great. It's grating on them. So all the audience can remember after the speech, oh, that was the one who kept walking on the squeaky spot. Positioning of lecterns, where do you want those to be? Uh, lighting. The lighting is really important. Now, get, same for here. I've got my lighting. Now, one of the things I had to learn was you don't turn the lighting when you're on video straight towards you, because if you do, it just wipes out everything. So I was taught a little trick. You take the lights and you shine them against the wall so that the wall reflects back. So that's what's happening here. And that creates a softer light. And there are more things I could do with that. I could put a small, uh, slightly colored light is something I'm going to look at trying to put in uh, here. So I'm looking at trying to make this into more of a studio myself as I'm working through it. But the same thing when you're speaking live, you, live, you need to make sure you've got the lighting right. So, for example, if you're speaking to a larger audience, very often someone is videoing you on stage and projecting that up onto big screen so that everybody at the back can see where you are. Now, there is an area on the stage that is well lit. Generally, what happens on large stages is that they will light the lectern. So if it's all been set up on the assumption that everybody's speaking from the lectern, and at corporate events, often they are, and suddenly you come along and you're going to move around the stage, has it been lit for that? If it hasn't, then there's a danger that actually you're not going to be able to get picked up very well. The video, you will just go into dark spots and suddenly you will disappear on the screen and that will start to irritate the audience. So I'll give you an example. If you've seen any TED videos, you will notice that on the TED stage, there is a large red carpet. Often it's a circle, sometimes it's a square on TEDx events, but there is a red carpet. The red carpet is the lit area because all TED Talks are videoed. You have to stay inside the red circle, the red um, carpet, in order to make sure that you come out on the video properly. It's really important to, to remember that if you move around, that's fine. Now, I move around quite a lot uh, on stage. What I found when I'm sp speaking here, um, when I'm doing uh, online presentations, I have to calm that down. If I don't, then I start to lose Things. If I start to move around quickly, then all of a sudden, I, all you can see is a bobbing head. Uh, so I've got to be much calmer and much more controlled in my movement, uh, even though I'm quite an animated speaker. So these are some of the things that you've got to think about in terms of lights, sound. Um, I've got to think about slides. I'm not using slides here on this. If I was, I'd have to set this up completely differently so that the slides show up, and so do I. Um, so that's that. The, the other thing I need to think about is what I call the team. Now, I was speaking at Ladies Go Live uh, back on the 25th of August, and that was a big team event. That was a live conference done online. 
there were two people on production. There were two other people handling um, the, the various different streams. I was one of the hosts. So we had to go into the green room where I met all the other people on the panel. And we then went into another virtual room so that we could work together. There was somebody in that virtual room that you couldn't see if you were there who was controlling everything. When they spoke, I could hear them, but nobody else could. And they were managing, controlling everything that went out and how it was all organized. Now, to not work closely with them and engage with them would have been a disaster. You've got to make sure that you work with the team, respect the team. If you go to speak live at an event, there's an AV team, there's a meeting planner, there is a whole group of people facilitating the AV crew, and all of that team has to work together or else it will go wrong. Any speaker that goes in acting the prima donna, I know what I'm doing, I'm going to do it my way, oh, that will mess up. Work with the crew, work with what they need to do, work with the kind of microphones they've got. Make sure everything fits together. Test it, check it. Do If there's anything specially doing, check it out first, rehearse it, try it out and make sure that it works. If you're doing speaking online, if you're doing something special, run some trials, run some tests, do a, do a, a live test in advance to make sure that what you're going to try actually works the best way possible. And finally, um, the thing I want to talk about is the environment. And this is this is all of the things around you that you act over which you you have very little control. So think the kind of things that I can get well, some you do have a lot of control over. Uh, <clears throat> setting the scene. Um, make sure you don't leave the introduction to the facilitator. If you're speaking, give them an introduction so they can read it out. Then you know that you're going to be introduced the right way. The number of times I've found where a, a speaker has not done that and the chair, the, the chair or the meeting host introduces them and picks a story they found on the Internet, which actually was their opening story. So suddenly the chair or the meeting host has completely undermined the story. Now, the moment the speaker goes into trying to tell that story, the audience are going to think, oh, yeah, we've already heard that. So you write your own introduction so that you're introduced in the way that helps you and enhances what you're going to do on the speech. Um, you've got to think about your timings. Um, keep the timings right. Keep them uh, short. I try to keep my timings on these down to about 10, 15 minutes. I think if I go beyond that, people probably aren't going to listen so much. Um, room temperature, if you're, if you're an external meeting, Oh, you've got to keep that room temperature right. If it's too cold, people are worried about the cold. If it's too hot, the, the audience won't be concentrating on you if they're more concerned about the environment, if they're having to wrap up, if there's a draft, air conditioning blowing down on them. All of these are the sorts of things that can interrupt it. And then you've got inter interferences. Now, I've been in the middle of a speech where all of a sudden someone in the kitchen nearby has dropped a, a crate of plates and you, you've got to recover from that. I've had a, a waiter walk straight in front of me across in front of, in front of the stage. Um, yet there are all sorts of possibilities. Oh, the worst one, somebody with a, a jackhammer on the roof of the conference center in the middle of a speech. The, the, now, to some extent, you can't control these, but you need to make sure you've got somebody to, to handle that, to tackle it, to deal with it, to, to try and stop it. Uh, make sure as far as possible you eliminate all of those environmental issues, the, the temperature, the interferences, the timings, all of those things over which uh, you may have absolutely no control when you're on stage. Just, just try to do everything. Now, finally, think about this. Things will go wrong. At Murphy's Law, um, you know, if well, there are about 12 Murphy's Laws, but anything that can go wrong will go wrong. Yeah, it, it, it's a complex event. Doing a video broadcast, doing a live event, there's a lot of things that can go wrong. Yesterday, if you watch my uh, show yesterday, you'll know that 10 minutes in, or five, I think about seven minutes into it, and everything shut down. And I lost, lost the connection, uh, and we, we were shut out, and I had to literally reboot quickly. Now, it's not the first time that's happened. It's happened a couple of times in the last um, two weeks. And it does happen. The first time I didn't realize I could actually go straight back in and get, get in there very quickly. So what happened was I had set up a 20-minute break before I got, got back, and I really had to redo the speech and forget about the first one. Um, so I'm learning very quickly how to handle that. But if things go wrong, you need to be prepared to be able to deal with it. I'll give you a very simple example. You get there, and your slides won't work. 
or you've given them the slides on a memory stick and they put them onto their machine and all of a sudden all of your wonderful graphics you spent hours putting together all your special text they don't have those fonts on their machine they're not embedded and suddenly all your slides are all over the place if you haven't checked them out ah um, or it just dies happened to me power <clears throat> the link to the uh, video um, link went on stage and I lost all my slides I had to deliver the whole presentation without any slides it was quite visual but here's the important thing things can go wrong but the show must go on you have to be ready to just find a way to make it happen to keep it going and let that show go on so that's a, an introduction to platform mechanics is all the things around your speech your vision your presentation online your presentation on a stage all of those things around you that make the speech better because they work well but actually distract the audience when they go wrong and it's up to you as a speaker to do your best to avoid any of the problems from happening by preparing in advance and being ready to cope quickly and just move past it so that the audience doesn't stay focused on what went wrong they stay focused on your speech what you have to say and that they remember your message a lot more tips a lot more ideas if you want to come and join us at eSpeaker live check in the chat you'll see the link to the facebook page just come and join the club um, it's a simple club. I'm trying to get more and more people into it on the, over these this 31 day challenge and encouraging people to come. Just come and join eSpeaker uh, live. Um, share your videos, share your presentations, uh, get some feedback, talk to us. Uh, happy to talk to you, happy to find you some ideas. Thank you for joining me tonight. Look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Take care.